Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of mine. This time I'm back with Avatar The Way of Water Part 3. I have the feeling that this is gonna be the longest video reaction I have ever done because this is already my third part and I haven't even arrived at half of the movie. I am so excited to see what's gonna happen. Let's see. Feel his breath. Feel his strength. This is a beautiful parallel to what Neytiri taught Jake when he tried to ride that horse. Yeah, he's gonna fall. <laughs> and she's laughing as well. Just like what Neytiri did. Not easy to master. Perhaps. No. You should. No, I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> Honestly, Jake is me. Like, what can I say about this man? He is literally me. Like, the more challenging a situation is, the more I want to master it. The bigger the challenge, the more I'm gonna accept the challenge. You say that it's very difficult to master and I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm gonna show you that I'm capable to master it the first time. There is nothing impossible for me. I can and I will tame this one. I'm not gonna settle down for anything less. I want this one. Good position. Very important. The arrogance is gonna get you killed, sir. He's like, oh, all right then, but yeah, bye bye. <laughs> you must slow down your heartbeat. Girl, you want stop. Girl, you want him to slow down his heartbeat as much as he can while you're touching him, while you're putting your hands all over him. <laughs> I'm sorry. Didn't you see the big hard eyes he gave you? Then you feel the tension between you two. Girl, what are you trying to do here? Are you trying to test his resistance? What are you trying to do here? Breathe out slowly. Look, look at his face. Look at his face. He's completely mesmerized by her. He's completely and utterly in love with her. And she expects him to like slow his heartbeat while she's touching him. Girl. Girl. You're not that dense, are you? You're not that innocent. She knows what she's doing, people. Don't lie to me. She appears to be innocent. She is not innocent at all. She knows what she's doing. Look, your heartbeat is fast. Girl, you're touching him all over the place. Do you expect something different? Not him knows. Do not dare shoot any of them. Are you guys for real? Don't shoot them with a tranquilizer. Navi kids younger than me do this with their bare hands. The hard way. What is this insane obsession that the colonel has with Jake Sully? Colonel, are you in love with Jake? Is this what you're trying to tell me here? Because that much obsession over him just choosing the Navi side instead of yours. You want to murder him just because he chose the Navi side and not the human side. After you completely destroyed their home tree and burned down so much forest to build your stupid streets. And now you're coming here being all arrogant like that and you're trying to compete with Jake? Like what is this? What is this insane obsession that he has with him? Him literally going there. Yeah, Jake Sully did it the hard way. Of course he did it the hard way. So he's gonna do it the hard way as well, because Jake Sully did it, and he has to be better than Jake Sully, right? He is actually petty like that. He's actually petty like that, people. I cannot move on from this man. Jake just wants to live in peace, just wants to be with the woman he loves, with the family he created. He just wants to keep them safe, wants them to be happy. And the only thing that they are capable to do is like bitch at them. This insane obsession that he has with this man is beyond my understanding. Is he just trying to show that if he's capable to beat Jake at what he's good at, that he chose the wrong side or something? He didn't have to betray his own race like that and blah blah blah. Are you actually petty like that? Oh, she just busted tie the mouth shut first. <laughs> Honestly, honestly, that's just his revenge. In my opinion, he actually sees his father in the clone. Because in a certain sense, the corporal already said that he is the clone of his father. 
I think that was enough for Spider to like grow fond of this man. And we did see a glimpse of Spider's inner torment in the beginning of the movie. He's capable to look after himself and he has a new family. Like the Sullys are his family, but he still seeks the presence of his father. And right now we are seeing the moment where he's like, maybe I can have a shot to have a father in my life. He knows that his real father is in there, even if it is a clone. It is still his personality and his thoughts, his ambitions, everything. So Spider is actually seeing this as an opportunity to get to know who his father was. Perhaps he's hoping that he's gonna be capable to create a relationship with his father. Because of the lack of absence of his father, he grew up missing the part of his life where he has a father. And now he has the feeling that he's gonna be capable to get it. And he doesn't care who his father truly is or on whose side he's on. He's just being blinded by his desire to have a father in his life. But I'm really worried about Spider and his sanity here. Because I have the feeling that he unknowingly is putting a lot of faith into this man. In hope to gain the father that he always wanted. Without actually realizing that this may be a lot more than what he signed up for. Because his father is not a hero. His father is not someone he can be proud of. And I have the feeling that right now he doesn't really care. I love this though. That we're getting to see this moment the sea between these two. Your home. The sea gives. And the sea takes. And the sea takes. <laughs> Darkness. And light. To light. Mm -hmm. I got it! Zaleo! You did it! <laughs> I love this too. Oh, she's the new chosen one. Don't lie to me. <laughs> Even she saw it. I don't know. She's just looking at the stairs. Just leave her be. Uh -huh. What'd you say? If she wants to. Are you some kind of freak? <sighs> Not them actually pulling a bully here. I mean, we already knew that he's a dick, but like, he didn't have to prove me right. If she wants to stare at the sand, let her stand in the sand. This is my problem with people nowadays, like especially when I'm in a shopping center. And the person behind me thinks that he has a reason to just like lecture me about how to live my life. And he literally gives off the same vibes. If I want to stare at the sand, let me stare at the sand. Like, let me just live in peace. What is wrong with people that they literally just don't get that? Why do you always have to bark at the wrong tree? Sooner or later, you're gonna get kicked, sir. I would have kicked you a long time ago. Because your stupid comments are just childish and nothing else. And when someone is too childish in my eyes, they are stupid. And when someone is stupid and can't learn, I have to help them learn. And like I said, pain is the best teacher. Will you just shut up and let me live my life? I'm not getting involved in your business and you are not getting involved in my business. If you can't say anything positive to me, then just don't talk to me at all. Like, the world is horrible enough as it is. I don't need any more negativity in my life. I mean, you're not even real Nazi. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hands off, sir. Hey. Back off, fish lips. Oh, I love it. Oh. Look at this little baby tail. Don't touch me. <laughs> oh, the oh, tail oh, is back as well. So hands off. You heard what she said. Back off. Leave them alone. Back off. Ooh. Okay, the tail. Okay, this is the arrogant smile that makes me want to punch him so badly. Can I punch him? Please tell me I can punch him. Please tell me someone punches this man. He has to be punched. Because this is actually such an arrogant smile which just shows... Yeah, okay, I'm gonna back off. But I'm just gonna keep on using every opportunity to, like, make you feel miserable about yourself. Smart choice. Ooh! Honestly, he stopped when Natayim showed up. Can someone explain to me why? Does he respect Natayim? Why? Why does he respect Natayim but not Loak? Don't tell me this is another Jake. Like, uh, people, I have the feeling that I'm talking so badly about Jake when it involves Loak. But, like, I, I can't stand... 
the fact that someone is suffering that badly deep down. Loak just doesn't get shown enough that he is appreciated and that he's wanted. And that makes him feel every single second of the day worse about himself when he gets lectured by his parents. That makes him feel worse about himself and it keeps on making him feel that he has to prove himself. I have the feeling that Loak is not having the fact that Anu stopped just when Ateum showed up. Because when Loak showed up to stand up for Kiri, they just circled in on him. And as soon as Ateum showed up, they immediately shot up and said, okay, it's fine, we're gonna stop. This is gonna make him feel even more insecure about himself. Because he's like, Nateum showed up, he has that presence about himself that makes everyone like, just back off that respect that he wants to have, but he doesn't get it. And that makes him feel more bad about himself. And that hurts me. Didn't I say that he's gonna keep on talking in the corner? I know this hand is funny. Look, I'm a freak. Alien. <laughs> smack him. But you can do something really cool. Oh, please smack him. First up, it's up real tight smack like him. Okay. Dang. Period. Oh my god. A punch, bitch. It's called a punch, Period. Bitch. Never touch my sister again. Oh my god. I love Loak. <laughs> Nateum, come on. You know you want to. <laughs> two against four, people. This is two against four. Nateum is taking care of just one. And Loak is taking care of three. <laughs> what does that show about him? This is him trying to show, yeah, I'm the macho here as well. Like, don't underestimate me. <laughs> oh god, not another lecture. What was the one thing I asked? The one thing. Stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. Right. It was my fault. I don't think so. You've got to stop taking the heat for this knucklehead. Oh my god. I'm sorry, but Tame. Have we seen the Tame's face? He's like, oh my god, it's gonna start again. I have the feeling that Tame is also not having Jake <laughs> lash out at Loak so many times. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. But honestly, Nateum is such a good brother. He keeps on standing up for him. And this actually just shows what I said in the first part. All of his frustrations are there because of his brother. Because he has the feeling that he has to live up to not only Jake, but also his brother. Loak knows that he is a good brother. He knows that Nateum is always standing up for him. He's always doing everything he can to protect him, to look out for him. He can bring himself to hate Nateum. So that makes Loak feel even worse because he can't unleash his rage at his brother. You having all those insecurities, trying to live up someone's expectations of who you should be, and you having the feeling that you have to do it in order to be loved, that's like insanely bad already. But it's pretty difficult to hate someone when they don't give you any reason to. He can't hate him. And that makes him feel insanely frustrated because you feel insecure and you are mad at yourself for not being capable to unleash that frustration onto the person that is causing you that type of misery. Because deep down you know that they did nothing to deserve any of the slander. Loak felt so guilty when Nateum literally immediately stood in front of him, protecting him literally from his father. And was like, it was my fault. As in, I started it. It was not his fault. And he was like, yeah, you gotta stop taking the heat for him. As in, the father knows that it's Loak, but he always assumes that it's Loak without actually giving him a chance to explain himself. He immediately just thought, yeah, that he just started to fight him just because, you know. He didn't actually assume that there was a backstory. He does not even try to understand where his son is coming from. He's not trying to understand why he's acting the way he is. He just sees him as a troublemaker. And that must make Loak feel so bad. Because it's like, my father doesn't even believe in me, you know. Go apologize to him. No. no. Let's go make peace. He is not having it. Me either, sir. That's what the other guys look like. Worse. Good. That's good. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Jake is a king. He was like, what did they look like? Worse. Good. They de deserved everything they got. He's trying to make peace. Sorry I hit you so many times. 
<laughs> this is what your ugly ass gets for messing with the wrong man. <laughs> like you go at Giri, you immediately face the wrath of Nateum and Loak. Honestly, I have the feeling that Loak is way more expressive about the people he cares about as soon as they're in danger. And Nateum is more like calm collected perhaps because he's older and so he already has like this sort of life's wisdom where he's like i have to look at everything in a neutral point of view i can't let my emotions get the best of me because that could mean that i make a huge mistake in battle so like he has that some sort of mentality and Loak is more like driven by his emotions since he already has so much on his mind because of his insecurities. So as soon as they're in danger or like they're being messed with, he immediately goes for the attack and the team is more like trying to defuse the situation. And since Loak already initiated the war, he was like, oh, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go in because he could have just like grabbed Loak, but he was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna go in for the kill as well. Come hunting with us outside the reef. No way, I'm not allowed. I must be asking the wrong brother. Oh, they are using his insecurities against them. Oh my god, look at. Oh god, look at Loak's face. This is literally him saying, bitch, what did you just say? So it's not just me that actually sees it like this. Everyone else is noticing it as well that he has this huge problem with his brother. He feels this huge insecurity whenever Nateim is involved. As in, he doesn't have the guts. The brother is a better warrior. So the brother would be a much better suitable candidate for hunting. Since he's not the brother, he's not gonna make the cut, you know? Insecurity problem when it comes to Nateim. So it's gonna work. He's gonna go. Let's do it. Yeah. Ah. This way. I know a good spot. The smiles. They are all leading him into doom. They're gonna leave him there. They're gonna be like, have fun coming back. Yeah. And they're all gone. They're all gone. Hey guys! I'll go! He's gone. Come on, this isn't funny. It really isn't. Oh god. <laughs> Just to imagine the oh god to imagine the, the scared factor here oh my god he's gonna eat that <laughs> he's gonna eat that just like what happened with that sort of tiger that ate the gun of jake in the first book people the parallels that i discover here the parallels between luak and jake hands off my body oh my god i'm petrified for him it's the tail! Like I said, it's the tail for me! Hands off the great bitch! Oh my god! Oh my god! He can't stay in there for long. He's gonna die if he doesn't breathe. Try me! <laughs> yes! He died because that's the only thing he deserved. And Loak is gonna die as well. Beautiful. We love a death caused by a bitch. I don't just be ready when I come for your ass. You're a Tokun. Mm. You saved my life. Thank you. They hurt you, didn't they? Friend? Oh, Loak. That's right, we're friends. People, I am so sad. Like, I actually feel bad here. Loak feels so lonely. He feels so misunderstood. He was so excited when he finally got the chance to make a friend. I'm pretty sure he has the feeling just because of how much he gets scolded all the time. He has the feeling that no one actually appreciates him back home anymore. So making this new friend makes him feel that he finally has someone that just understands his true self. And that must be the most beautiful feeling he can experience right now. I'm sorry, nobody... I'm sorry, I have to ask. Nobody noticed that Loak has been gone the entire day? Literally nobody went to look for him? Jake asked him to make peace with Anung. But Anung probably has returned. 
because Loak also passed out. I doubt that it was just for like 10 minutes. We are having evening and Loak is still not back. Nobody wondered where that man is. People like... She feel who? Ewa. She feels Ewa. <laughs> She's the chosen one now. I hear her heartbeat. It's okay. <laughs> Nateam. This man is so iconic that I can't help but to love this man. He was actually like, move your ugly ass over here and spill your guts to my dad as well. <laughs> love it. Look at this. He's actually holding his braid. As in, he is not joking. Nateam is not okay with what's going on. He is not joking. Tell him what you told me. Oh! Trouble. Okay, why should he be in trouble when Anung left him to fend for himself? Oh. Oh, <laughs> Loak. Hey, let's have a look at you. Oh, Loak. Loak's face, it looks good to kill. I mean, me. Honestly, I would have been a lot worse. I would have been a lot worse. I literally would have, like, ran up to this man and punched him. Literally, I would have given him the biggest punch in history. He would have needed <laughs> to heal his jaw after I'm done with him. My son knows better than to take him outside the reef. The blame is his. It is his. No. Uh, it's sir, not. what are you doing there? Not on his fault. I am sorry. What What is with all these men taking the blame for something they didn't do? This was my idea. Lies. And tried to talk me out of it. Lies. Oh, no. What were you thinking? They know. Dad, you told me to make friends with these kids. That's all I was I don't trying hear to it. do. Oh my god. And again. And again only shitting on Loak. I think I know why Loak said it was his fault. Even though I wouldn't be that selfless. You screwed up. You take responsibility for it. Even though like the parents knew. The parents knew that it was him. They knew that he messed up. They knew that he started it. But I think I know why Loak was like trying to take the blame for it. Because he knows what it feels like to get yelled at by your parents. He knows what it feels like to be misunderstood. He knows what it feels like to act out. He knows what it feels like to be lonely. Like for your parents not to see who you truly are. So I can't watch someone else going through the same torment as I am. So I'm gonna try to like defend him. I know what it feels like and I don't want someone else to have to go through the same thing. You brought shame to this family. I'm sorry. Can I go now? Any more trouble that you can not in your tail. You read me? Wow. No, I have to say something here. This is exactly what I meant. Loa said that it was him that it was his idea and the parents didn't even give him the benefit of the doubt. They like immediately just assumed that he was just confessing. Not that he actually was just covering for Anung. They immediately went to judge him. He did what his father wanted him to do. He said make friends with them and that's what he did. And Jake immediately said you bring shame to this family. What the hell is wrong with you Jake? Like, he knows what it feels like to act out. He knows what it feels like to be misunderstood, yet he misunderstands his son the entire time. Like, the fact that Loak is having all these personal problems is because of his father. Because the father is the one lecturing him most of the time. The mother is just, like, standing there. You could actually see that she was feeling bad for Loak. So she was like, I'm not gonna add insult to injury. Because Jake was already taking care of that. He just wanted to please his father. That's why he went there to make friends with these guys. After they bullied them and called them freaks. And he, Jake was not satisfied with uh, his attempts. He was not satisfied with the way he dealt with things. And he was not satisfied with him. Like, do you expect Loak to feel any better? In this family, when everything he does is never enough for his father... He's trying to make his father proud of him. He's trying to do everything in his power to live up to the person Jake 
wants him to be, even though it most definitely is not who he truly is. And Jake immediately uses every single opportunity he has to piss on Loak. Maybe he sees himself in Loak, because I already said that there are so many similarities between these two. Between the way they fight, between the way they act, between the way they literally are more like impulsive, as in they act more on emotion. So maybe he like sees his younger self in Loak, and so he's trying to teach him by being very harsh on him in order to get Loa to not make the same mistakes he did in the past. But he's not actually realizing that he's actually breaking Loak by doing that. I don't want to shit on Jake because I love Jake. I already expressed my love for this man in the first movie. But I do believe that he's being way too hard on Loak. The fact that he said you brought shame to this family was way out of line in my eyes. It was way out of line. Where were you? And again the... What happened to keep an eye on your brother? Sorry, sir. No. No sorry, sir. I cannot with this... I can... Oh, people, I am so mad. You told Loak to go out and make friends with Anu. Was Nateim supposed to follow them without them realizing it? He cannot watch Loak every single damn second of the day. He is his own person. Why do you expect him to be glued on Loak's ass? But the fact that they all just be immediately believe that everything is his fault. He must feel so alone asking himself, why didn't they, I don't know, get rid of me since Nateum is always the one that is better. Why didn't they get rid of me when they had the chance? Like they only shit on him. And then they like turn to Nateum and are like, why, where were you? What happened about keeping your eyes on your brother? He has his own life. It's a very horrible thing if you need your son to look after your youngest son. Because that just shows how much trust you actually have in your youngest son. They immediately assume that Loak is gonna do everything wrong. So they want Nateim to always be glued on Loak's ass to make sure that he doesn't even think about committing any other atrocity. You have no idea how mad I am right now at the parents. They should know better. I'm sorry. And they should see the signs. They said it in the beginning that they're, that he's trying to live up to them and that it's hard on them. You know that he's struggling under the pressure, yet you still blame them for the way they deal with the pressure. Why did you speak for me? Because I know what it's like to be one big disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> D didn't they say that? The ocean blessed you with a gift, brother. The two with a gift? Have not returned yet. I'm sorry. They're just all friends now. <laughs> They're all just friends now. We know Tulkun is ever alone. I have respect for Loak. I would have run away. Like, I would have been done with all this shit. Me always getting the short end of the stick. My parents not understanding me, no nothing. Positive coming my way. I would have waited to see what's happening. If my parents didn't even make an effort to find me, then I have my answer. He had a, a, a missing fin. Payakan. Was Pyakon, a young bull who went rogue. But he saved him. him they say he is a killer. He no, saved him. He killed Natvi and other Tulkun. Oh, he's no killer. Look, you were lucky to be alive. Tell but he this. saved him. He saved my life. He's my friend. Nobody believes him. My baby bro. Oh, uh-uh. The mighty warrior. Nah. -uh. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Do we see this? Like, Nateum is dismissive about what he's telling. Nobody believes him, and Nateum is making fun of him. They do not take him seriously, no matter what he says. And that hurts me, because that makes him feel so stupid. He must be thinking, no matter what I say, no matter what I try to do here, it's not working. No matter what I do, they will never be on my side, they will never listen to me, no nothing. See? You guys are listening. See? Oh, uh, come back. No! I am so done. Like, literally, Loak realized it himself right now. They do not take him seriously. I feel so bad for him. I actually feel for Loak. I feel for him. I really do. He does not deserve any of this. Like, the more I go into the video, the more I get enraged with the parents. 
<laughs> and for everyone around for not seeing who Loak truly is and what he's actually going through mentally. I hate it when people see physical problems as a bigger problem than psychological problems because they are not. When you have psychological problems, depending on how deep the roots are, it is possible that that problem remains with you forever, that psychological pain. And people don't even realize that anymore. Just because you don't see psychological problems or psychological pain doesn't mean that it's not there. And that's the problem in general. You don't see. You aren't really looking below the surface. They are dismissive about psychological problems. So if they see that you are hurt, like you're bleeding on your face, like you have a cut on your face and you're bleeding, like people immediately see it and they're like, oh my gosh, what happened? But when you're bleeding on the inside, nobody cares. And because they don't see it, they assume that nothing is there. Just because I look happy on the outside, it doesn't mean that I'm happy on the inside. Like when I'm acting out, you should ask yourself why I'm acting out to bring the problem back that I have with the parents. You as parents should at least be capable to have a certain image of your sons. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments below what you think was best and I will see you in another video. Bye.